be a little more caring. Let's start off at exactly the right uh, level. And the more attention or better setup you have, um, the smaller the oscillation will be of that change in pH. So when I talk about pH and you know the throttle pedal and all this kind of thing, um, I, I certainly want to insist that you know the better you have this gas pedal working, the closer the lights can come to the plant without having deficiencies. So if you have good throttle pedal position, you have good access to the fuel in the gas tank, and we can bring the lights down and really make them work much harder. So I'm quick to preach that you know my high, any hydroponic method done correctly should produce at least a third more product in a third less time than anybody in soil and it's something that you can do consistently once you get kind of the hang of it um, you should be able to get that consistent output with every plant um, compared to soil where it's always going to be a different garden in each container so um, either one will work I often say uh, you know, soil is a little bit of labor of love. It's great for a few plants, great when you uh, have the time. Uh, but hydroponic methods are something that uh, are certainly well proven. Uh, they're a fraction of the time to, uh, to in energy to keep them going. And the success rate is just staggering in comparison. So just uh, another thought on this setup. Um, we're, we're actually going to put a new garden in the store here. So I thought I'd better show it before I tear it down. Um, this is probably one of my favorite setups that I've done over many years. Um, this is simply a 4 by 8 table. We're exampling it with a light mover on it. Uh, I personally love using these air-cooled fixtures. And you can put as many as three across this 4 by 8 table. Um, that's pretty much solid light. Um, now, if they're solid light, you might not be able to move them. If it's two lights, you might want to put a mover on them, like I mentioned before. Movers are something that moves that hot spot around and makes it even easier to grow. But uh, I love using these A-frames. Now, this is a fairly simple construction method here, if you can get a good shot of it. Um, you know, a few two-by-fours. But what it does is it makes it a nice height to work. You can mount everything on here. We've got fans and all kinds of display things mounted on the frame. And, and it's on wheels, so we can move it around. Uh, you know, wheel it out of the way um, and, and clean things up if you want to. Um, very easy, portable kind of thing and holds a tray quite nicely. So most of the time, uh, you know, I'm usually saying it's one light per 4x4 four four kind of area. Um, at maximum, three lights for 4x8. That works quite nicely. And uh, just the things we have running here is we've got a manifold at the back, which I don't know if you can really get a little shot of it way back in there where essentially the half inch hose is split into a bunch of these smaller feeder lines. Um, each plant is likely to get one or more spikes. It's set up on a simple timer, doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, it's poking right into the rock wool. If we're using rock wool, it's going to go right into a corner or any spot. We just don't want it splashing on the stem. It doesn't have to be any particular method. Um, the table itself is heated so that uh, the surface is nice and warm. Uh, we're have it on a slight angle. I mean, we're trapping a bit of water here, but there's always an ample air space underneath everything, so nothing is sitting in a puddle. Um, it's set up with a simple drain into a reservoir. We've got an aerator, um, a heat stick inside, and I'm using my pH meters to constantly monitor what is going on in the tank. Now, this kind of thing, this is a fairly large tank. I still recommend it be changed about every seven to ten days. But with this kind of size of tank, um, we literally uh, fill it up with a common recipe we do each week. And probably once in between that time frame, we'll, we'll need to adjust the pH. But this type of monitor reading all the time makes it fairly easy to, to get a grip on, you know, whether it's changing overnight or, uh, or, or very slowly. But it's nice if you can, uh, you know, mix up a recipe to put in your tank and uh, put it all in blindly so you don't uh, have to measure, you know, go through such a pain painful process at the beginning. Let it all sit and stir and warm up uh, to temperature and then make sure the values are correct. Um, certainly if they're not, um, you know, we'll adjust a recipe for next time or, or, or doctor it. But it's nice, uh, you know, what I'm getting at is uh, if this was an eight week cycle, I'm going to suggest that six of those eight weeks are probably the, exactly the same recipe as you did the week before. So it's nice to get, uh, you know, use uh, measuring cups, use things to, uh, 
to, uh, to, to repeat what you did last time. Now, uh, maybe while I have this over here, um, I'm just going to show uh, a quick pH uh, measurement here. I've got uh, a simple probe, um, and uh, th this probe measures food level, and, and this one measures pH level. Now, I just took a sample of water from our city tap. Now, I don't mind city water at all. Uh, I'd have no problem using it if I'm in the city. But the issues we often run into in our little Peterborough area here is that it's such a rural area. We have such hard water in, in many of our wells around here. Uh, you can see that the pH is much higher, and I, 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 sometimes it's even higher than 6.4. It might be as high as 7. But what I'm getting at is the EC value of the, of the solution is, you know, this meter says multiplied by 10. So it's 240 EC with a pH of 6.5. So really, that's not such a bad pH if you're going into the soil. So maybe soil you can take right out of the tap and just control your wet to dry, wet to dry. And if you follow our DNF food chart, for cuttings it would be a little low, so you need to add a little bit of food in that and probably make the food value be about, let's say, three or 400 a total when we feed the clones. If we're going to deal with rock wool, I'm going to suggest the pH is much too high. We really need to lower it to about a 5.5. So it's about 10 times, um, it needs to be lowered by about 10 times if we look at it that way. So, uh, as well as, I would note that the EC level of 240, well, you know, if you're at home somewhere and you're going to do clones and you've got well water, whether you want to bring it in here or, or own your own meter, I would certainly take a look at this food value. Uh, just to give you an ins uh, for instance, at my house, uh, this food value right out of the tap is 1,200. Um, there's, there's not too many successful clones going on with that type of 1,200 EC water. So uh, if you do have hard water, you know, let's face it, we can buy a bucket of water or support, get some city water. If it's something that's a permanent installation, we have lots of options with reverse osmosis systems. Um, these days they're less expensive than ever. I mean, they're not real inexpensive. I'm going to say $400 is something that would hook up to a tank and run all the time and just simply fill the tank and shut off. Um, it doesn't make water very quickly, but it would uh, be very convenient and it would keep the tank full all the time. So if you do have water that is real excessively hard or high EC values, high PPM values, um, it's just not suitable for growing. Um, unfortunately, if you take it to the city count, county uh, health unit and get it tested, um, they will not test it for hardness or for EC values. They will simply test it to see whether it has any bacteria in the water. They may come back and say, hey, that's very suitable, tested zero, zero. Um, it, they're testing for bacteria. So this kind of thing I'd suggest that, you know, despite um, we could all live on McDonald's food, um, you know, for quite a spell, I would tell you that if we had better source, uh, we would probably be healthier right from the get-go. So um, especially when we're talking seedlings, young clones, or even older plants, you'll find uh, having good water is certainly the key. These plants are made up of such a high percentage of water. We're adding more and more things into the water. So if the water is full of stuff, it's basically going to steal the food values that we put into it and quickly become a, a very toxic level of certain elements and start poisoning the, uh, the plant by having uh, too much of certain elements within the medium itself. So the long, long and short of it is, check your water. Let's make sure it's a low EC or low PPM value to start. If it's high, there's just no product you can add to put into the water to fix it. It has to be removed. And filtering the water is kind of a difficult process. So I'm going to really say that reverse osmosis is the only way to purify uh, hard water or poor water. It's gone through a water softener, uh, any Brita filters or things you've purchased I'm sorry, they're not going to work the same way as a reverse osmosis uh, filter. And if you ever question things, uh, let's use a meter like this. Uh, this kind of thing can't be fooled. So it's, uh, it's uh, well worth taking a look at. And uh, water is certainly something that uh, we can't avoid. We can't uh, add a product to get around it. So water is simply something we test and it's not suitable. You either have to uh, filter reverse osmosis the water or use uh, an alternative source.
Um, so this kind of thing, uh, you, you can do the method in any size. Um, any kind of light can be used. Uh, but I really do love, uh, like I mentioned, these air cool fixtures are, are really suitable for hydroponic methods and, uh, you know, an extreme, uh, a, a good grower looking for maximum yields. Um, open fixtures are lovely, much less money. Um, certainly gets us that horizontal position for a little more intensity. Um, it might be a step up from using a parabolic, standard power, power, parabolic reflector. Uh, but uh, certainly um, if you're just starting a soil and it's the first time ever, um, I'm going to be honest, these, uh, these reflectors that look like the big umbrella will get cast the biggest uh, projection of light that's more even projection than using the horizontal. So a lot of times, um, you know, if you read or uh, look on, online, uh, I find these horizontals are pushed really heavily. Uh, but there's nothing wrong in starting with an open fixture uh, parabolic and getting, you know, getting started at it. Um, getting, uh, get growing and get a feel of what's going on and then moving up to a, a horizontal position is, is very suitable after a period of time. Um, the, the bugger about using these the horizontal fixtures are if you don't know how to use this high intensity light, uh, what's the sense of producing it like that? Um, using a parabolic reflector will give us a nice even coverage so you can put more plants under the same light and they're all lit the same. So it's uh, up to yourself, but uh, we do sell lots of different kinds of reflectors.